today we're going to talk about pulling um, fur for a culture for potentially ringworm and then also plucking some fur uh, around a potential lesion for ringworm and sending it out to the lab for PCR. So we want to make sure we do this before we lime sulfur dip the animal. Lime sulfur just kind of um, negates the whole process and nothing will grow so we want to make sure we're plucking and pulling for cultures before we do their lime sulfur dip. Ideally you want to start with the plucking first. You're going to take uh, a hemostat. You can also take um, forceps however you're going to get a little bit less surface area. I like the um, hemostats just because you can get a little bit more fur in that. So this guy doesn't have a ringworm lesion, but we'll pretend that he has a lesion in this little soft area. So you would go right around the side, the edges of the lesion. Put your hemostat as far down the skin as possible and pluck out some fur. You want to get that root base. I don't know if you can see, it's probably too small, but there's a root base on there. Um, you want to do 10 to 20 pieces of fur with potential root bases on there, so we may need to do another pluck for him. But we're going to put this in a sterile white top too. And we'll probably need to get a few more pairs. Uh, there's just a couple in there. Um, so we'll do another pluck on him. Just around that lesion, you want to get as close to the skin as possible, pluck out, and get some of those hair roots. One more thing about the PCR, just label your tube so we know what it is. You're going to send this out for IDEX uh, ringworm PCR testing. Then we're going to pull for a culture. So we've got our culture medium plate. That's this guy, dermatophyte plate. And then we've got a brand new clean toothbrush. Every time you do a culture, you want to use a new toothbrush. I know some places dip that in alcohol and whatnot, but we are going to use a new toothbrush each time. So we've got our fresh plate. In the end, we're going to label the plate um, with the information that we have. So the idea for doing the toothbrush brush method, there's lots of different ways. I try to remember 30-30-30, so I do big scoops 30 times down the body, so 30 swoops. You're going to get a whole bunch of hair. I sometimes just remove a little bit of that excess fur. And then you're going to put that 30 swipes down and just do once brush across. And then we're going to do 30 swipes of the lesion. So we'll pretend he has a lesion up here. So we want to do 30 brush strokes with your toothbrush of that lesion. If you actually had a lesion, you'd be getting kind of gray crusty stuff on your toothbrush. So 30 of those. And then go back to your plate. You can see a little bit of grooves in there. Um, I push it down just a teeny bit and then scrape it across. So you should see some grooves there. Throw away your toothbrush, put your lid on, and then we're going to label the tube. We want to label it with the A number of the animal and the date and your initials. In terms of storage, so you've got your plate, um, you'll label it, animal's A number, the date, and your initials, and then we'll put it in a plastic bag. We tend to use the IDEX plastic bags. You don't want to zip lock that, so just leave the zip lock part of that bag open, and then you want to store the plate in the bag upside down, and then you'll put it in the designated area for the DTM cultures. Each site has a little bit of a different place, but the idea is to store it in a sort of warmish, dark place. So um, each location has either a drawer or a little box or a cupboard that we put them in. 
and so they'll store get stored there for the vet to take a look at them. The vet will come in once a week and do a microscopic evaluation of each culture plate. So um, once that is done, then the vet can decide if they want to keep that culture plate continuing to grow or if we are done using that culture plate. And then the vet will uh, dis discard that culture plate when we're done. Thank you.